Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out this $129 laptop that I recently picked up from Walmart. This is a 14 inch Lenovo IdeaPad 1i and I think if you know what you're getting into, this could be a really good deal, but the operating system that comes pre-installed is a bit bloated for the specs we have here. So installing something like Tiny11, which is a cut down version of Windows 11, would really help out with performance. Now you could always run it with Windows 11 in S mode that comes pre-installed, but with these machines, machines running in S mode, you're going to be limited to stuff from the Microsoft Store, and some people can definitely deal with that, but personally, there are other apps that I like installing. So with this, I totally wiped it, and I installed Tiny11. I recently did a video on it. I'll leave a link for that in the description in case you're interested in checking it out, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat, installing Tiny11 on this $129 laptop really does help out with performance. So these are available over on Walmart's website. You might even have one in store close to you. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad i1. It's a 14 inch laptop. It comes with four gigabytes of non-user upgradable RAM and the Pentium N5030 CPU. Four cores, four threads with a clock up to three gigahertz. Just taking a look at the specs and the price, you got to understand that this is not a high-end laptop. This is something made for browsing the web, document editing, email checking. You could get some light gaming out of the way on it, like some indie games, and we will test out some older 3D games and emulation by the end of the video. So you got to understand, going into one of these cheaper laptops, you're not going to be getting AAA gaming out of the way. Now, if you wanted to do some cloud gaming, it would work out really well. It actually has Wi-Fi 6 out of the box. But this is really made for browsing the web, email checking, document editing, and even Skype calls can be done on this laptop. Taking a look at the I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got our power input, one USB 3.0 port, full-size HDMI. We've also got USB Type-C, which is 3.0, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right-hand side, we've got one full-size USB 2.0 port and a full-size SD card reader. The very first thing I was interested in with this laptop was the upgradability. Unfortunately, we cannot upgrade the RAM. It's soldered to the board. It comes with four gigs, and that's very limited for Windows 11. But with a modified operating system, you can definitely get by. It's passively cooled, so it's totally silent. And we've actually got an M.2 slot in here, so we can easily expand the storage. Was really hoping that when I got in here, we could easily upgrade the RAM. But unfortunately, the only thing we can add here is more storage. When it comes to the specs, remember, we're working with a $129 laptop here. For the CPU, we've got the Intel Pentium Silver N5030. This is much better than the 4105 that you'll find in a lot of these really cheap laptops. Four cores, four threads. We've got a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz and a turbo up to 3.1. The GPU is the Intel UHD 605 at 750 megahertz. We've got four gigabytes of non-user upgradable LPDDR4 soldered to the board at 2400 megahertz, 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage, plus we've got that M.2 slot so we can add up to a one terabyte drive if we want to. It's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, a 14 inch 1366 by 768 display, nothing special but it'll definitely get you by, and they claim up to 10 hours of battery life. Now this thing, at full brightness, full volume, playing back video from YouTube, I'd say you can get around six hours out of it. And this does come pre-installed with Windows 11 in S mode. It's really easy to get out of S mode. You can do it directly from the Microsoft Store if you want to. Or you can install a modified operating system like Tiny11, which is really going to help out with performance given the lower amount of RAM that we have in this unit. Overall, I've been really impressed with the performance this thing's putting out, given the price paid. Now, uh, one of the modifications that I did, well, it's not really a modification. I've got this in high performance mode. Out of the box, you're going to be in balanced mode. Definitely go to high performance mode. It'll up the TDP on that CPU, give you those higher clocks for a little longer. And yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a secondary laptop that you don't mind carrying around with you basically anywhere you go, this thing is going to be a really nice little system, as long as you can tweak the operating system just a bit. Even Windows 11 in S mode does need a few tweaks to keep that RAM usage down. But since we've got Wi-Fi 6 built in here, browsing the web is actually really snappy. I'm not using Edge, I'm using Firefox. I would definitely go with either Chrome or Firefox if I was you, but you could always stick with Edge if you wanted to. Just head over here to Lenovo's website, and I'm actually not sure if you can pick this up on their website or not. The only place that I've seen it for $129 is Walmart. You might be able to find it for a little more on Amazon or eBay, but at that $130 price tag, I think that's kind of a sweet spot, and that's exactly where you need to be with a system like this. Checking out some video playback. 
Now the way the CPU is set up out of the box, this actually does have a boost up to 15 watts, but it's only for a few seconds. You're going to be running at about 9.6 watts, and even with 1080p playback, we do get a few drop frames. It's not horrible, and it's totally watchable, but since we're working with a little over a 720p display, I would stick with 720p 60 video playback. As you can see here, no drop frames, it'll play anything you want at 720p 60, or even 1080 if you want to go ahead and take it up that far. And keep in mind, I've actually only tested with Firefox. You actually might get a little better performance with Edge or Chrome. Now, one thing I love to use these lower end laptops for is emulation. With this system, we're not gonna be able to go up to PS2, PS3, and Wii U, but this will handle GameCube and Wii emulation. First up, we've got some Dreamcast using Redream. DOA2, not bad at all. We're running at full speed. FPS is up in the top left hand corner. Next one I wanted to test here was PSP using PPSSPP, and even with DirectX 11 in this game here, Chains of Olympus, at 2x I did get some dip, so I just took it down to 1x. I think this could be alleviated with a different operating system, something like Botocera would work out really well on this little laptop, running it from a USB drive. Or since we've got extra room for a drive in here, we could set up a dedicated little emulation system right there. Or you could install Linux totally on this machine, and I'm sure with OpenGL we would get better performance with PSP and Linux. But I gotta say, one of the most impressive things that I saw here was the GameCube and Wii emulation performance using the Dolphin emulator. We're using the DirectX 11 backend, and upscaling a game like F-Zero GX, especially on this track, is kinda out of the question on this 605i GPU but at the native GameCube resolution, it actually runs it at full speed. If you're interested, we can test out some more emulation on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. But now I wanted to move over to some PC gaming. And of course, on a lower end system like this, newer AAA games are gonna be out of the question. So I threw some old stuff at it just to see what would happen. And something like Dirt 3 actually runs at full speed, 720p, low settings. Definitely not a game a lot of people are playing nowadays, but it's still nice to see that we can run some PC games on this low-end system. And if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left-hand corner with all the games that I tested, we're right there under 10 watts. Sometimes you'll see it jump up to around 10.1. But unfortunately, even Skyrim at 720p, low settings, was under 60 FPS. And there's no question in my mind that this chip paired up with the 605i GPU, even with just 4 gigs of RAM, can run this game at 60 FPS. But what's really holding us back here is the TDP on that CPU. It's just not sending enough power to get those boost clocks up. And unfortunately, even using a third-party application like Throttle Stop just won't allow us to set this at 15 watts. No matter what I've tried, it always dips under that 15 when we're gaming. I think it's hard set from the BIOS. I've tried several different applications to up the TDP, and unfortunately, it just won't take. So in the end, I do think this is worth it if you know what you're getting into. If you don't mind doing a little bit of tweaking and tuning with the operating system or even installing a different operating system altogether, then I think $130 would be well worth it for a secondary little laptop here. It's definitely not a AAA gaming machine, but as you saw in this video, you can get some lighter emulation out of the way on this, even up to GameCube, and you can play some older PC games on this just fine. You just gotta understand that we're working with a lower end system. There is a reason it's $130 brand new. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing a little more from this laptop, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind doing a Linux video with uh, something like Manjaro installed on this or even a dedicated emulation video with Bado Serra. If you're interested in picking one of these up or maybe learning a little more about it, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.